everybody, my name is Erin Mormon and I am this year's coordinator for Carpe Artista's rock camp called Jukebox Hero. Camp starts in just a few weeks, so in the meantime, we want to introduce some of our instructors for this year's camp and brag on uh, all of the accomplishments that they have and all, of the all that they bring to the table for you guys as students. So they bring so much value and knowledge and it's really um, makes it worthwhile for our students to join us at Jukebox Hero. So today I have with me Dr. Jason McKinney, who is no stranger to Carpe Artista events. He's been around from the very beginning. So Dr. McKinney, why don't you tell us just a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I am uh, originally from Indiana, uh, which bears no importance to anything whatsoever. I've been in the music industry for 25 years, both as a recording artist, as a writer, and, and as a recording artist, both uh, as an independent recording artist and labels, both independent labels and major labels. And then I'm also a professor of music business. Uh, so I enjoy instructing people on how to not make mistakes in the industry that I've made. So that is my main jobs. I still tour, I'm still active, just put out a record a few weeks ago on a Bonfire Music Group. And then I'm still teaching, so I'm in it today. Literally today, I'll be working on stuff in the music industry. That's awesome, Dr. McKinney. Um, so explain to us a little bit about your touring experiences you know before you were signed to major labels you were doing things like sleeping on church pews before performances uh, so tell me a little bit about how the miserable touring experience goes versus touring with a major label and having everything ready for you yeah i will i will say first of all people love to glamorize touring period and it's all miserable it's just varying degrees of miserable uh, I think it's Cheryl Crow that said she's miserable 23 hours of the day and then she gets on stage and it's this rush of everything. But I have done everything from literally sleeping on church pews, like I said, and but also like eating the worst pizza. Every church youth group would think, you know what, we'll feed these guys pizza. They've never had that before. They didn't have that on Thursday and Friday and Saturday. Uh, so and just kind of building up. Um, and then I've had the experience of touring all over the world. I've been to the Middle East. I've been to Africa. I've been to Europe many times. Uh, I, and even like weird places like uh, Djibouti, Africa, uh, which is a tiny little country. And then been to Qatar, which is one of those like dangerous countries. Uh, I've played for the military. I've played Poland, France, Germany, just all those places. And so, and even in that, the difference is once you reach a certain level, obviously there are comforts that are there as far as like you're not sleeping on church pews there's actually beds i mean i stayed in a hotel in bahrain where we each had a three-bedroom suite to ourselves and an infinity pool that went off the edge of a 30-story building yeah. and i slept on floors of creepy people who played cartoons of mickey mouse all night long true stories so it's the wide variety you never know what you're going to get you got to be flexible and realize that uh, the, the biggest device in touring is um, it's, it, you've got to do as much as you can to create the comforts and the familiarity of home. It sounds silly, but bringing your own pillow sounds like it wouldn't mean anything, but there's something about the smell of, it smells like home, my own sheets, like it, to me, that's the biggest thing. Um, but you know, having that wide variety, it still takes a toll on the body, but there's always, always the excitement. You do get to see things like I got to see a church built out of lava rock that is, was built in 1100. Uh, so you get to see some cool things, um, but it is not easy. And even a lot of people who think that they're like, oh, I want to go tour. And then they do it. They're like, yeah, that's not me. I, I can't do that. So, I mean, but you're going to get all varieties of things and things yeah. are going to happen. You got to be flexible, create the comforts of home and be flexible because eventually a vehicle is going to break down. Eventually you're going to get, go be in Europe for several weeks and be on your way home and be stuck in Charlotte because the plane is overbooked. That happened too. And you draw straws for who gets to stay. And somehow the lead singer has to stay in Charlotte for an extra night and everyone else gets to go home. So I'm not bitter about that, but. Not at all. So, so many touring experiences. Um, you mentioned uh, before we started the interview, um, your time with your early record label when you were still young and super inexperienced and how um, you felt like you didn't know anything and it encouraged you to learn more about the music business. So can you talk a little bit about that experience and how it led you to where you are today? 
Yeah, I mean, this, the simple story, and then I'll back up and give a little more detail. The simple story is we didn't know what was in our contract. We were told to sign it, and we signed it. Uh, and we discovered later on that there were some clauses, there were some things in the contract that were missing that would have benefited us. And the most simple way to put that is our main contact with the label, the guy that signed us, you know, in the movie, he'd been the guy with the cigar, you know, like, sit down, kids. He wasn't really like that. But in the movies, that's what he would have been like. And that guy left the label and the new guy didn't believe in us as much and didn't give us any attention. And we had no way to do anything about it. So, and I had no idea what to look for. I didn't know what that was in a contract. I didn't know why you needed to see it in a contract. So I started my journey educationally in academia. First, I just did music performance. Uh, my first degree is in music performance. Then I went back because like, I want to know what I'm looking at. And it started out as for me, but then as I progressed in education and more in the music industry, I wanted to help other people not make those mistakes. So that started this whole journey that ended in getting my doctorate. Yeah, that's awesome. And I get the privilege of being one of his students that he teaches all the time. Um, okay, so you have been an indie artist. You have been a signed artist for a small label and you've been the indie, an, uh, eh, a signed artist for a major label. So can you talk a little bit about the differences there and then with and being an independent artist, talk about how that affected your lifestyle and your income and all of those big adult things that um, we have to face when we are pursuing a career in music. Yeah, so uh, started as an indie artist because that's what everyone starts as. So, um, you know, like I think it's Dave Grohl that said, you don't become a rock star by going on a TV show most of the time. You get in a garage and you suck and you're terrible and then you slowly get good. Uh, and of course, Dave Grohl says in his case, and then you become a part of the biggest band in the world. That is not what happens to most people. That part of it, that part's a little unique to him. Uh, but uh, I ended up signing with a major label. The, the difference is this, with a major label, you're going to have, you're not gonna be so worried about how many donuts you ordered for the video shoot. Um, because you're just gonna be like, we want, I don't know, 100 boxes, sounds great. Because it's not your money, so you don't care. Uh, in fact, um, I'm not going to tell, I'm so tempted to tell what band this is, but early on in my career, there was a guitar player and we were playing this convention. This guitar player is of a very well-known Christian band that has been around for like 30 years. Uh, and they're very, very well known and they like kangaroos and wallabies, but I'm not going to say who it is. So, but if you can put two and two together. But the guitar player for that band uh, actually is from around where I grew up. Mm -hmm. So we played this convention and we were, he was downstairs in the hotel lobby getting breakfast at this very fancy hotel. Well, I was young and green and I thought, I can't afford this, this breakfast. And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. Charge it to the A&R man. He'll take care of it. And so when he came over, he's like, yeah, all this, this is going to be on so-and-so's ticket. And he's like, just put it to his room. And he's like, and he's like, that's how you're artist boys. And I was like, I was like, okay, so that's the major label. You just like, yeah, just yeah. charge. Now what you give up though is, and this is what happened to us in that deal is we ended up sounding not like we sounded. So as an indie artist, we built up this career sounding one way and then the label changed it. So we gave up a lot of control. The budgets were bigger, but the control was different. And then let me go to an indie label. An indie label generally will not take as much artistic control. You'll have control over your sound, but they're not, but the budgets aren't going to be endless. There's going to be squeeze and they can't like with a major label, they can spend whatever it takes to get you out to the people. They can spend it, but you are going to give up control. One of the misnomers is people think I'm going to have complete control and someone's going to give me a million dollars. One of the axioms of music business is he who spends the money gets the power period end of story all day, every day. So like, at the beginning of her career, Taylor Swift did exactly what Big Machine Records told her to do. She came back last year and said, I'm not recording another note until you guys do what I want. Now she had the leverage. So now she gets to decide whatever she wants to do. And that's what's going to happen. As a new artist, you don't get that. I don't care how talented you think you are. It's not going to happen. With an indie label, you're going to get more control, but the budgets are going to be limited. And so you're not going to be able to get pushed out there. You're going to see somebody like some artist that's similar to you on a major label and say, well, why are they on MTV? And I'm not, not that MTV plays record or videos, but imagine they did once upon a time. And the reason is because that label spent 250 grand to get it on there. Your label doesn't even have 250 grand. So you're going to have to take that trade off. Now as an independent artist, 
the best way I can describe it is when you order t-shirts, you order 72 t-shirts, right? You think I have $5 into each t-shirt. How many t-shirts do I have to sell to break even? And so I'm going to order this and we have a run of 20 shows. That means I need to average five t-shirts per show. Everything you do, and, and even down to like, I'm going to spend on a Spotify ad for this gig. Am I going to spend 50 bucks or 100 bucks? Because if I spend 50 bucks, that means I need at least an extra five people to show up because of this. So everything is down to that, that very real equation of if I spend 50, I need five extra people. Is this ad going to get me five extra people at the show? And if the answer is no, then you don't spend the money. You don't advertise at all. And if the answer is yes, then you spend it. And so everything, like every little decision as an independent artist has to equate for, is it going to get me more streams? Is it going to get me more vinyl buys? Is it going to get more butts in the seats? And if it's not, you don't spend it because you don't have any slack. There's no slack. Those are the big differences. Yeah, that's awesome. So if you were talking to a new artist who is trying to pursue a career as an independent artist, what would be the biggest piece of advice that you would give them? Don't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I would say a couple things, and this is going to be a harsh reality. One is um, all you need is on the encouraging side, all you need is a thousand true fans to make 300 grand a year. You have a thousand real fans that you're their favorite artist, then you can make a living. You as an independent artist, if you're going to stay an independent artist, you're going to have to give up the idea of fame. Yeah. The only way to be famous is either on a major label or a you know, a really big independent. Everyone talks about Chance the Rapper being independent. Sort of, I'm not gonna get into those details. He was kind of independent, but not really. He had a lot of help, like from, so, but as an independent artist, you gotta give that up. But you gotta determine what am I gonna do? Who is, how am I gonna carve out my niche and how am I gonna reach those people? And realize it's a long game. You're probably gonna have to be bivocational, like have another job for years, not months, years. The freedom you get when you do carve that niche out is you can put out whatever you want creatively and those fans are probably gonna follow you. But you're gonna have to give up being famous and you have to give up being rich. And I always say this, music is the one career where you say, I made an average living, I got an average home, I got an average life savings, I put my kids through college and people go, hang in there, you'll make it someday, just hang in there, kid. But if I were an accountant and said, I got an average home with an average retirement and put my kids through college, be like, hey, you're a very successful accountant. It's the only career where people make you a failure. It's like Taylor Swift or bust. Yeah. And you just got to not buy into that reality. And yes, you may be playing an Irish pub four doors down from visible, which you guys know what I'm, Aaron knows what I'm talking about. And you may be getting $200 for that show, but you made $200 that day. So it's not glamorous, but you made a living. So that's one of the things you got to give up the whole rock star dream. If you're going to be an independent artist, you got to have the long game and you got to realize you have to be very targeted in who your niche. You have to know exactly who your audience is because you can't afford to waste money reaching people that aren't really your audience. On the flip side of that, what would be the biggest piece of advice you'd give a, a new artist trying to get the record deal? Uh, realize that the only way you're going to get it um, is to be playing the exact type of stuff that is on the radio. So I kind of mentioned Nirvana. They, their first album was not on a major label. Their first album was on an independent label, Sub Pop, and they got a cult following. And then they were signed to a major label, but nobody expected the projections for that record, never mind, were 50,000. It obviously sold way more than that, but nobody saw that coming. Not the record label, not the band, nobody saw it coming. That happens once a generation. So if you're talking about even signing a major label, that's one in a million. If you're expecting to be Nirvana, someone that just sort of, we do whatever we want and that's gonna become super popular, that's once a decade. So you're talking about one in 10 to 20 million. Don't bank on that. So realize if you want a major label, they put out homogeneously sounding things, things that sound alike. They do that because they're not really in the creative business. They're in the selling records, selling advertisement business. So if you want the major label, there's nothing wrong with that. But realize you're going to have to fit into the mold, right? So one of those zeitgeist things that just sort of happened and music flipped on itself was this whole bedroom pop thing with Billie Eilish, right? Yep. What labels are looking for is a bunch of girls that sound like Billie Eilish. If you're going to come be like, 
yeah, I sound totally different than her, but I'm going to do the same thing as her, and I'm going to flip the industry on its head. Uh, highly, highly unlikely. So you're going to have to realize you're going to have to play the game. Yeah. You can't you can't take an indie music mentality to a major label. They're 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 two different music industries completely. Exactly. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Dr. McKinney, and I thank you for all that you bring to Jukebox Hero and all of the fun times and all the experience and advice that you're going to bring to the students that are with us this year. Um, so for those of you who are watching, please uh, check out our website and register for Jukebox Hero. It will be July 19th through 23rd. We hope to see you there. Don't walk